thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Respect to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Respect to the officers of this church, to the choir the musicians, to the ushers, the mothers, the kitchen magicians, to the members, as well as the visitors. God is good. Can you give him some praise this morning? Do you believe that he is good? For who he is and all he has done, the good book says he is worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but I've been bad. But God been good. That's why I praise him. Because despite my badness, he's still good to me. Respect to my wife, my daughter and my son in his absence. The book of John chapter 17. Verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is true. Amen. If you have a thought for your mind, It'll be set apart. Set apart. God is a holy God. The good book said, be holy because I am holy. He is pure. He's without fault, without fail, without sin. Hmm? He got all power, hmm? all knowledge. And he's everywhere at the same time. Right now, whether you believe it or not, he's in your mind. He hears your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking right now. There ain't nothing that God can't do. And the good thing is, the powerful thing, the beautiful thing, God wants you to be just like Him. Hmm? God wants you to be just like Him. And I don't know who you want to be like. Some folk used to be want to be like Mike. But then he couldn't jump like he used to could. Huh? Some folk wanted to be like Paul Paul, but Paul Paul got older and he couldn't do what he used to could do either. Is that right? 
Some folk want to be like the rich man, but there's a lot of rich men that die broke. Who you want to be like? God wants you to be like him. He intended that from the very beginning. The book said we were made in his image and in his likeness. From the beginning of time, God wanted you to be like him. Who do you want to be like? One thing I can tell you today that God wants you to be satisfied. Tell you that God wants you to be satisfied. Y'all can say it. Tell your neighbor, God wants you to be satisfied. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Sometimes you can be so miserable in your life and so many things happen that you actually think that God wants you to be miserable. God don't want you to be miserable. Why? Because God is not miserable. God is dwelling in excellent holiness. Huh? They ain't have to be joy where he is. They ought to be joy where you is. Huh? You got joy this morning? Yes. God wants you to be satisfied. Look at verse 13. And now I come to thee these things. I speak in the world that they might have my what? Joy. God wants you to be satisfied. Yes, he does. Now, don't trip though. It ain't the kind of satisfaction where you get everything you want. You can do whatever you want to do. You can say whatever you want to say. Go with it. Now it ain't that kind of satisfaction. That's what we get messed up. That's why we get grieved with God because he don't do it like we want it. Then we don't want to come to church. We don't want to read the Bible. We don't want to pray because he didn't do what I wanted. That ain't the kind of satisfaction that he's looking for from you. Now he's looking for you the fact that you are satisfied in his what? Presence. Because the Bible says in the presence of what? The fullness of joy. That means if you was in the graveyard, you ought to be satisfied. Why? Because if you're in the graveyard, and God is with you wherever you go, he in the graveyard with you. He got the doctor's office. Hello, somebody. He's on the job site. He's in your bedroom, your bedroom, wherever your feet is. There's God. He wants you to be satisfied. Satisfied. Why? Because he loves you. It's as simple as that. He wants you to love him like he loves you. Huh? And he made it possible. You really not know that he made it possible because Jesus is praying. Did y'all hear what the text teaches that Jesus is praying? Jesus is praying for your satisfaction. How do I know because the Bible says that my joy might, they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. God don't want you to be miserable. The text teaches that Jesus is praying for your joy. So why are you miserable? Why are you not satisfied with God? And you might say, well, preacher, how do you know I ain't satisfied with God? The Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speak. If I listen to you and all I hear is complaints and, and you whining about this and these people ain't that, don't talk over there, you're gossiping, you're, you're lying, you're talking about everybody, you ain't satisfied. Because if you were satisfied, you would be talking about the goodness of the Lord, of the Bible, and everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. That's what I will bless the Lord at all times. Get praise.
Huh? Is your husband or your wife? Your dog or your cat? Your son or your daughter? Well, the new bills or dollar bills, which what you got to mind about? Because God knows your dollar bill and he knows your new bills. And he said, I'm able to supply all your needs. And so God don't even want you to wonder about your dollar bills or your new bills. Because he said, I'm able to supply all your needs. God don't want you to whining about your enemies. Because he said, I'll, for you, because I love you, I'll make your enemies your pursuit. Is that what God said? He said, if you, if you just show love and respect toward him, you ain't got to complain about your enemies. He'll make your enemies like shadows down drown in the midst of the red sea. God wants you to be satisfied. That's not all that God wants from you. He also wants you to be Sanctified. Oh, and here's what was so interesting about that. Sanctified people are satisfied. Huh? Yeah. Sanctified people are satisfied people. They're satisfied with who he is. They're satisfied with what he's done. They're satisfied with what he's able to do. They're satisfied with what he promised to do. You know what? Because they left the world. Why are you looking for somebody to take his place when there's nobody to satisfy 
Jesus is praying for your satisfaction, but Jesus is also praying for your sanctification. And one reason that he's praying for your sanctification, because if you're satisfied with him, amen, he wants you to walk with him. He wants you to talk like him. He wants you to walk like him. Why? Because you've been brought out of the world. You've been brought out of somebody. You don't come out of the fellowship of the condemned into the fellowship of the redeemed. And if I was at the redeemed of the Lord, say so. Your mouth ought not to be the only thing that testifies that you're not the same person that you used to be. Your conversation ought to tell you. Why? Because of the way you talk, it ought to bring glory to the Lord our God. When you been satisfied with Christ, you don't mind and we not know it because the Bible teaches us that when God comes in your life, Paul said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things have passed away, all things become new. You can't walk like you used to walk because you got a new power. You can't walk like you got you used to walk because you got a new power. David said, he leads me in a path of righteousness. God, I don't want you to take them out of the world. I want you to sanctify them in the world. Did y'all see what Jesus said in the church? Ought to be. And sometimes we're trying to separate ourselves from everybody. So we can be sanctified. You can't separate yourself from everybody. You just got that. You got to watch how you carry yourself when you're with you know, somebody. Did y'all hear what I said? You got to watch how you carry yourself when you're with somebody else. You know, somebody. And you got to be mindful. The Bible said, amen, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. The Bible said, avoid all appearance of what? Evil. I have to watch myself. I gave you an analogy of my wife while ago, and, and, and some folk don't care that you're mad. But you got to care that you're married. And you got to watch what you say. You got to watch. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all don't be funny. You got to watch how close you get. Amen. You got to watch what you get. You remember the side of You got to. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me today. You got to watch this a lot because you're sanctified. In the He said, I'm praying for Bartholomew, that Bartholomew might be sanctified. Bartholomew is not sanctified because she got a steeple on the top. Bartholomew is not sanctified because she got an edifice to get her into. Bartholomew is not sanctified because she got pews and a pulpit and a, a choir. <laughs> the devil got a church with her. That was somebody. The devil got a church and walls and I got a pulpit and man. The Bartholomew got to be sanctified by the word of God. And, and I, I, a lot of Christians tell me, Pastor, I, I just be uh, struggling. And, and, and I'll tell you why he's struggling because uh, Jesus said you got to be uh, sanctified. And he didn't say you can be sanctified just by saying I'm saved, I'm sanctified. Y'all don't talk to me. Anybody can say I'm saved, I'm sanctified, and I'm on my way to glory. But how is your walk matching your talk? How is your talk edifying your walk? You got to put in the word, baby. You got to put time in on your knees, pray. Don't you see the text of teaching that Jesus is practicing self-discipline? If you really want to be sanctified, you got to practice it. You got to get in the Word. Paul says, study to show yourself approved. A workman need not to be ashamed. Write and divide the Word of truth. Jesus says, serve the Scripture. Any of you think you have eternal life, it can be that they testify of me. If you want to be a good Christian, you got to get in a good book. You got to read from cover to cover. You got to discover who God is and let God
you want some, you can get some. You just got to remember who you is and who you ain't. Right. Verse 16, Jesus said they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Just read it on my nerves sometimes. But she's still my wife. Uh, and sometimes I get on her nerves a whole lot less than Brother John, don't you try it.
but you got something to do on the front row. You hear Jesus, you're being disciplined. But now the name Jesus was, he was determined. Anybody glad that Jesus was determined to save you? He was determined to take your place on the cross. Anybody can thank God. He came down through one and two generations, took your cross upon his shoulder, went up a hill called Calvary. Anybody glad he was determined? They beat him, but they couldn't turn him around. They lied on him, but they couldn't make a give up. They talked about it, but he didn't quit. You got to have that same level of determination. Because when you're in Christ, folk gon' hate you. Folk gon' talk about you. Folk gon' criticize you. Folk gon' scandalize you. But when you got your mind made up, Paul said, I am determined. I'm fully persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him. I've been here going on four years. And guess what? Everybody ain't like every day. Me. It don't 
don't matter what the day look like. This is the day that the Lord has made. Larry is going to rejoice and be glad. God wants me glorified. That's why he died. That's why they hung him high. They stressed him wide. He died. But he didn't stay.
Come on down here. 